The coronavirus ripple effect is rolling through South Florida's economy and a prime example, Port Miami. The crisis, of course, is devastating the cruise industry, but another business suffering financially is the cargo industry. Tens of thousands of workers are impacted and millions of tons of goods aren't coming or going. As it stands now, the cargo side of Port Miami is down about 15 to 20 percent. We are joined right now by Florida Congressman Ted Deutsch. It's good to see you, Congressman, and uh, you have Thank accepted Christ. an invitation uh, to be part of the White House's bipartisan congressional panel on economic recovery. So we want to ask you, President Trump just announced new guidelines to reopen the economy, telling governors they can start the process before his May 1st target date. What do you make of that? Uh, well, I, I, I don't think that we can simply declare when we're going to reopen the government. I. I was glad to accept the invitation um, for the president to serve on this committee because I, I wanted to be sure there, there was a voice at the table that said we need to listen to public health officials and, uh, and the scientists. And that's what's so critical here. Uh, the one thing that was clear from our call today was the vice president laying out uh, very explicitly that we've got to do this in a planful and careful way we need sufficient testing. We need sufficient tracing. Uh, we're not there yet. We need to work toward that. So uh, I, I think using the guidelines that the president he, himself put out today, no one's ready to do this right now, but we need to start planning for what's going to happen to get the economy moving again and to help the American people. Congressman, Americans are concerned about the spread of this virus and the federal government's response to it. Is now the time even for a White House panel on jumpstarting the economy? Oh, I think it's it's absolutely appropriate for uh, for us to start thinking about uh, how the economy is going to get moving again. That's the that's what's okay. so uh, that's what's so important is to do this in a planful way to make sure that uh, that this isn't something that's done arbitrarily. So I don't think that now is the time for us to simply declare let's, that it's time to start the economy again, to get back to work. That won't work. That risks a spike in cases. That risks the spread of this terrible uh, virus even faster. But it is appropriate for us to listen to the public health e experts, to listen to the scientists, and to really focus on ramping up the testing that's gonna be necessary for us to number one, know how, uh, how fast this really is spreading. And then to number two, know where we can start thinking about how to combine that testing with tracing uh, to, to ease the economy open. But no, this can't be done in a haphazard way, absolutely not. Okay, so unemployment is skyrocketing. We learned today that the Small Business Administration has run out of money for the Payment Protection Program and that negotiations in Washington are at, at an impasse. So what can you say to Americans who are trying to understand why they're now being left in the lurch? Uh, well, I was on the phone all day today, again, with small business owners um, who have done everything right. They've kept employees uh, working. They've kept paying them even though their businesses are closed. Uh, they qualify for the, uh, the, the PPP loans. Um, we need to increase the funding for it so that they can get what they need to help get through this storm. And, um, and I talked today to, uh, to our own leadership and to the White House about the need to get this done. I'm hopeful that uh, over the next day or so, we'll be in a position to increase the funding for that, to increase the funding for the SBA loans, for the economic uh, injury disaster loans so that people who are really suffering are able to get what they need, but that still leaves open the challenges we have in Florida with our unemployment system, which is still broken and not able to really accommodate the Floridians who desperately need the, the benefits that, that they deserve. Well, the uh, governor spoke about that this afternoon, saying he's trying to expedite it and he's trying to uh, uh, not enforce that rule that they have to be looking for another job. I want to know about the letter that you wrote, Governor DeSantis, expressing concerns about the numbers that the state is putting out. Um, sure. Well, I and I, I, I sent a I sent a letter. I think you're talking about the one the numbers that that talks about the number of cases and why we when we report cases. We break it down into residents and non-residents, but when we report the number of people who succumb to this terrible virus, 
Um, we don't include people who aren't residents of Florida. I don't understand why that is. It would seem that it's in everyone's interest for us to be as tr transparent as possible so that so that we know just how bad this is. As the, the medical examiner up in Palm Beach County said recently, um, I think people just want to know who died in our state from COVID-19. They don't care where their home is. And I think that's right. And and so we just want more transparency from the governor. And I, I think that's in everyone's best interest as we fight this terrible virus. Congressman Ted Deutsch, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Ruby. Thanks, Elliot. Thank you. We'll be right back.